38, addressed to Mrs. H. E. by Charlotte Turner Smith, read for LibriVox.org by Corrie Samuel. In early youth's unclouded scene, the brilliant morning of eighteen, with health and sprightly joy elate, we gazed on life's enchanting spring, nor thought how quickly time would bring the mournful period. Thirty-eight. Then the starch maid, or matron sage, already at the sober age, we viewed with mingled scorn and hate, in whose sharp words or sharper face with thoughtless mirth we loved to trace the sad effects of thirty-eight. Till saddening, sickening at the view, we learned to dread what time might do, and then preferred a prayer to fate to end our days ere that arrived. When power and pleasure long survived, we met neglect and thirty-eight. But time, in spite of wishes, flies, and fate our simple prayer denies, and bids us death's own hour await. The auburn locks are mixed with grey, the transient roses fade away, but reason comes at thirty-eight. Her voice the anguish contradicts, that dying vanity inflicts, her hand new pleasures can create. For us she opens to the view, prospects less bright but far more true, and bids us smile at thirty-eight. No more shall scandal's breath destroy the social converse we enjoy, with bard or critic tete-a-tete. -tete. O'er youth's bright blooms her blights shall pour, but spare the improving friendly hour that science gives to thirty-eight. Stripped of their gaudy hues by truth, we view the glittering toys of youth, and blush to think how poor the bait for which to public scenes we ran, and scorned of sober sense the plan which gives content at thirty-eight. Though time's inexorable sway has torn the myrtle bands away, for other wreaths tis not too late, the amaranth's purple glow survives, and still Minerva's olive lives on the calm brow of thirty-eight. With eye more steady we engage to contemplate approaching age, and life more justly estimate, with firmer souls and stronger powers, with reason, faith, and friendship ours, will not regret the stealing hours that lead from thirty even to forty-eight. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.